Hello, everybody. Welcome. We have David here going to give us a wrap up of the 15 Nations Global Tour for Malaysia, the work that was done in the last three weeks. David, if you'll go ahead and get started, I'll, I'll share. I'm sharing my screen so you can just point me to where to go. Okay. Well, good to see everybody. I recognize most of the names, not all of them, but most of them. Um, so we just finished up Malaysia. Uh, that was a quick three weeks. I had a lot of other stuff going on this, um, this time around, so I didn't get to spend as much time actively participating in this in this um, jaunt of our tour, but um, it looks like we had some really, um, really hardworking people this time around. I was very nervous, as I always am, when we started <laughs> up with Malaysia, but this time um, that nervousness lasted probably a good week as we all kind of scrambled trying to figure out what exactly we're, we were doing. Um, Malaysia was not an easy um, uh, country to figure out as far as the genealogical, um, not just the genealogical, but a lot of cultural and, and elemental things. Um, but we did it and Malaysia turned out to be quite successful in the last, um, probably the last, the last week or so. We have, and I forgot to pull up my chart here, but um, we had, I just want to make sure I get my numbers correctly. I believe 148 new profiles added, awesome. which um, puts us one ahead of Ukraine. So Malaysia was not in last place as it looked like it was going to be for a long time. <laughs> um, okay, here I've got my list. And we connected six of our notables to the big tree. Oh, awesome. That was so that's, that's really a, a surprise. Over a third, right? Yeah, that's just about a third, I would I would say. So yeah. Um I didn't think we were gonna connect any. I I really just didn't know how we were going to um not only, you know, we were able to find some close family members, names of parents and stuff, but that's still a long way from getting connected to the global tree because you've got to have somebody, either um, somebody in Malaysia already that you can connect to, or you have to have somebody in that notable's family that went somewhere else where you can make the connection. So there's a couple um, significant factors that have to take place before you can make a connection. We've had we've had profiles where we've had over a hundred connections. We still wow. can't connect them to the to the big tree because there's nobody in their community on the tree. So um that that number really surprised me. What I want to do, um it looks like most of the people here are some of our regulars. Um, but for those that aren't or those that are just curious how we did it, I want to go through a couple of the profiles this time around and um kind of show you some of the obstacles that we faced and um, what we did to overcome them. And I want to start, if you'll go right kind of at the bottom of the screen now, you'll see um, the woman that looks like a queen because she is a queen. Uh, um, you want to go to her uh, profile? Yeah, I'm trying to expand the screen a little bit here so I can see it. Okay, there I go. Okay, so Queen Afsan, if you'd go to her profile. Um, I want you to take a look at her name at the top. And then if you'll notice uh, down below in quotation marks in her name, there's actually an additional segment to that name that right. uh, would normally go at the front. You'll see Avzan there at the end would overlap Afzan at the beginning of this, um, at the name at the top of the page. Um, so this was the kind of thing we were faced with initially was um, how do you put this name into the bo the wiki tree boxes you got first last or first middle and last name to choose from you can um put some of it as a nickname you can put some as another name but how do you figure it out well right it turns out that um there's a number of elements here to begin with um this woman has no last name um he 
belongs to a culture that uses a patronymic naming system, which means she takes the name of her father. It's not considered her last name. Um, where in, in countries like Sweden and, and other Scandinavian countries, my understanding is if your father's name is John, then your last name is Johnson, but it's used like a last name. Um, here it's an identifier, but it's not a last name. So if your father's name is John, um, you would be the son of John, but that's not your last name. That's just an identifier helping people to figure out which, um, right. you are. so, um, they don't have a last name but they do have a patronymic name. So the first thing that we can um, deduce from this, if you look at the word binti, right. that means daughter of. Okay. So after that is her father's name, not her That's name. That's all of this right here. All of that. So that knocks about half of it off. Um, we'd still need to do some interpreting of her father's name when it comes to filling out his profile, but that's a huge help um, having the father's name right there. Um, you know, if, if nothing else, you at least it'll, you at least know the parent's name and you can do an right. birth date and, and create a profile for him. Um, so then you're left with, let's go down to the second um, place her name is listed there where we've got the quotation, Tenku, Ampuan, Haja. This part. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The quotations, yeah. So um, as we did some research, we found out that Tenku and Tenku Ampuan are actually titles. Tenku means prince. And the Ampuan, it translates roughly to the wife of the crown prince. I see. Married. She was the wife of the crown prince. She later became queen, but um, she kept the title Tenku Ampuan. So that's why it's not up above, it's down below, is because that's her title. Right. Haja means that she took the pilgrimage to Mecca. And when you do that, you're entitled to use that honorific. Um, that, that that's for um, for women. I forget the pronunciation of the men's, but it's a very similar word. Um, but they get to use that as part of their um, their title or their or like I said, as an honorific. So those are actually not part of her name. Those are titles. Those would go in the title box, except our title boxes don't allow for that many characters. So. Um, Again, now we got to figure out kind of where to put that. <laughs> so her full name or her real name is simply those first two words, Afsan Ramahalala. Um, not sure if that's two first names or a first and second name. I still don't know how they do that in Malaysia, uh, but at least it was a start. I, I believe they're um, considered first names because both first names because everywhere you see her name written, they're both they're both given. So we place that in the first name category. Um, the second part goes as a Oh, it looks like, hope we haven't lost him. Just wait a few minutes here. Okay, well, I guess I'll talk a little bit about who's in the chat. We have uh, Christine Miller and Kathy Nava and Jen Lawrence and Thomas and Darren's in there. Great to see you all. Hi, John, Tyner, and let's see, looks like Thomas is sharing some information about the names. Oh, it looks like we did lose David here. Hopefully he'll be right back. So Thomas, this is interesting information, the difference being that many such nations have slowly done away with patronymics. And one can point to an exact time when the change was made. That's really interesting. Thanks for sharing that. And it's talking about the pronunciation. So that must be the for the men who have done that um, same that same have that same honorific because they did that uh, pilgrimage. Looks like David tried to come back, but hopefully he'll be back soon. So we'll just go back 
looks like this is this profile is connected. One of the six that got connected. And he's indicated here on the right hand side, far right hand side, which ones are connected and which ones aren't. So you can go out there and check that out. And I'm going to put the link to this page for any who are interested in the chat. It's also in the description of this video. It looks like we might be getting David back. Hopefully. <laughs> I know last time uh, he did the presentation, the wrap up, he talked about uh, the fact that they try to keep the number of living notable profiles um, to a um, to not very many that we're trying to stick with people who who uh, have passed. Oh, and we have Julie with us. Hi, Julie. <laughs> Oh, you got your mute. Your mic is muted. I said I came in so you didn't have to talk to yourself. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I don't know what happened. Poor David lost, lost his connection, I, I think. Yeah. I know they. he was really nervous about this one because of um, the three different types of um, cultures in the area. Uh and how they were all, you know, completely different on the naming and everything. So it was very, mm -hmm. he was ner really nervous about it. So just really proud about all the work they did, how they were able to connect so many. That was really exciting. 148 at Profile. They made a lot of progress. That's fantastic. Very exciting. So I hope we can get David back in here because he was going to announce what the next country is going to be, right? Yeah, I was really excited to see what that was. See, he wanted to share another profile, just don't know which one it was. Let's see if I can reach out to him on Discord. Yeah, I tried to. I didn't I didn't get a response, so I have a feeling his internet might just be all the way down. Oh. And I know I'm lagging still, correct? Um I No, I think or uh, yeah, I guess you are. <laughs> okay, let's see. Yeah, cuz it's taking you a long time to respond to me. <laughs> <laughs> So they have, oh, they, they connected Jimmy Choo. That's awesome. So now we can all check our connection to this famous fashion designer. That's exciting. <laughs> 28 degrees for me. Oh, I want to go look. What's his, what's his profile ID? He is Chu15. Oh, there he is. Here, I'm going to try to add David in. Oh, oh you I, got him. We did it both in it. David! <laughs> no, I didn't I do it. it. He, he must be able to do it himself. David, are you back? Maybe not. <laughs> so we were just talking about... Oh, there we go. There we go. Now we got you. So I just brought up a, another profile to to take up some time. I'm just sharing Jimmy Choo, Choo's profile. We saw that you got him connected to the tree. That's exciting. Okay. Yeah. So um, let me tell you a little how we did that. So um, Jimmy Choo does not have a lot of um, biographical information online. Um, it, we were not able to find his parents. Uh, we found his wife's name, um, but nothing else about her. So there wasn't a lot of info there. Um, but his niece is the creative director for his company, which he's no longer a participant in. He's left, but she now um, 
uh, is the creative director and has her own Wikipedia page. So she's a notable in and of herself. Wow, that's great. She married a man whose father was a um, politician in England who also has his own Wikipedia page. And his family goes back into, um, I'm not sure if it was nobility or not, but some very prominent people going back many generations. They were very um, aristocratic, maybe a better word for it, family. So we had to create some, um, I guess you might call them empty profiles. We created, um, she was actually Jimmy Choo's wife's niece. So we created a profile, which is private for his wife, because all we have is her name and she's still living. Um, we then created a profile for her father, who we know nothing about other than his last name, based on her last name. Um, we then created a profile for his son, which is also um, an individual we know nothing about other than his name. Um, those are all, all private. And then we were able to create the, his daughter's profile, which was Sandra Choi, the creative director for Jimmy Choo um, Limited. We then created a profile for her husband, who is a fashion designer in England, but he's not quite a notable, so we had to keep him private. And his father was online or on Wikitree, so we connected him to, to her or to connected the son to the father, um, which then connects back to Jimmy Choo. So we've got a whole lot of um you know like i said kind of empty profiles connecting them we know that the people existed we just don't know who they were or anything about them um right. but it did get him connected to the to the big tree so so we we accomplished it as um around about way. as that that may have been <laughs> yeah so you can see there you've got um you know a couple private people i think i see three or four of them there um, again, we know they're real people. We know they existed. We just don't know anything about them. Yeah, this Boswell name, this sounds really familiar to me. Uh, yeah, as a... Yeah. yeah. So that that's where my connection well, looks like comes there's a, at. Looks like there was a relationship there. <laughs> yeah. So that's really interesting. That's great, though, that you got that connect, uh, those connections made. So now we're all able to connect to Jimmy Choo. And, and if you go down on this, I just mm -hmm. mentioned briefly when you were when you were away about how you try to keep it to a minimum amount of people that are living that you guys work on yes. for the notable profiles. Yeah. So initially, this project was recommended to us by. Um, an individual on G2G who just threw out an idea and the events committee picked up on it and we started it. But her idea was to connect all of the world leaders, current world leaders to the tree. Well, the problem with doing that as a, as a project is all the world leaders are still living. So you'd have nothing but living people um, and we can't just open those up to, you know, to everybody to work on. So um, what we decided was rather than doing all the world leaders, what we would do is um, with each of our countries, even though most of them are deceased, we do include the world leader. And if I can find, you know, the parents who are deceased or a grandparent, you know, then that kind of opens it up for anybody to work on it. They can't right. work on the actual profile, but we can, you know, work on the family. Um, and many countries have a head of state and a head of government. So that usually would um, put to a president and a prime minister or a prime minister and a king. Um, so that gives us two. Over time, there have been a couple of occasions, and this was one of them, where there were a couple notables that I just thought um, were prominent enough that I kind of broke that rule and added a few um, living notables. And you'll see here we have two, um, the um, Jimmy Choo, and if you scroll down towards the bottom, oh, actually, we added a third. Um, scroll down towards the bottom. We have oh, yeah. um, Michelle Yeoh. I love her. <laughs> and and since she just won the Academy Award at 
just a week or two before we started this. I felt we had to include her. And then we have, um, I always like to add the, the astronauts. Um, so we have um, Dr. Shakur, it was um, a, he's Malaysian. He was a um, medical student and Russia made an arms deal with Malaysia. In exchange for the arms that Malaysia gave to um, Russia, Russia had to agree to take a Malaysian to the space shuttle. And Dr. Shakur got chosen. So he flew with the cosmonauts up to the space station, spent 10 days up there doing experiments, um, came back and he's now Malaysia's only um, individual who's been into outer space. That's so, awesome. um, that was an interesting story, but um, we were not able to connect him, but we did get some, um, you know, some of his family members up there. Um, sadly, his brother died the day he came back to Earth. Oh, man. Um, he was in a bar and fell and hit his head and um, and died, but that did get a, a lot of publicity. And so there were a bunch of obituaries with family members' oh. names and stuff. So we were able to to extrapolate some stuff from there. Um, but if we go to Michelle Yo, she um, she was a bit of a challenge because she's you know she's from Malaysia, even though she's um, living in America and and has her connections here. Um, she doesn't have the family connections here. It's got professional connections, um, but um, she comes from a very prominent family in Malaysia. They actually have a museum just for their family, which is something I would love to have for my family where I could show all my <laughs> historical documents and pictures wow. and stuff. But that's basically, she has a cousin that opened up a museum and it's basically just all about their family's history. Wow. And they have they have a number of very prominent people in their family, um, but prominent in Malaysia. So it still didn't help me get anywhere to making a connection um, until I came across an uncle of hers who was a medical doctor and moved to Hawaii. And he married a Chinese woman in Hawaii. Um, so that also didn't help me much as far as the ancestry because Chinese ancestry isn't any easier than Malaysian. But um, they had a son. No, I'm sorry. She had a brother who married a woman whose ancestry could be traced back to colonial New Jersey. Oh, wow. I had to go back about um, five generations of grandparents to find a connection, um, but we did. So it's Michelle through her through her father, through his brother, through his wife, through her brother, through his wife, back five generations to New Jersey, and we have our connection. So that was, that was a cool one to, to discover. I, we have almost all of our Academy Award winners are connected. Um, so she now could be counted among there as well. That's really great. What I love about this project too is that we're country by country, you're really expanding the uh, subject matter experts, I guess you'd call them, mm -hmm. within WikiTree for this country. <laughs> and you're kind of like bringing more awareness to the country and its resources. And maybe it'll become its own project for the country. So mm -hmm. that's yes. really exciting. Eddie. Well, and it's also interesting, you know, I, we use the metaphor from the beginning of this being a world tour and it's like we're on a, on a, uh, um, uh, an actual world expedition, but the reality is I'm learning so much that I feel like I'm actually going to these countries and, 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 and learning about them. And, um, you really kind of get absorbed in it. Well, because these, as you said, these these countries uh, or these family trees, they branch out in all kinds of directions. The other day I was chatting on Discord and everybody was in Malaysia, but I was here in New Jersey doing my research <laughs> and I felt like I want to go back to Malaysia. That's where yeah. <laughs> but, um, you don't but know really, where you're going to end up. It really is all about those collateral lines. Yeah. You know, we talked about our CC7 and how you know, that that's where you make a lot of the connections is out exactly. out to the sides, the the wi the the wives and cousins and stepkids and you know, just 
<laughs> there's so many can you just connections. You, again you don't know where it's going to take you and um i think some people may be a little intimidated by our project and then don't join up because how in the world are they going to do malaysian genealogy but um they we don't make our in connections in, Mal in malaysia <laughs> we make them in you know new jersey hawaii england um, you know wherever england yeah. yeah a lot in england so if you've got um experience with english records um you know and elsewhere you just like you just don't know well and um, just like just like everything else it's really a learning experience too mm -hmm. you know it's an opportunity to learn more about yeah so yeah. so on that note there towards the bottom you've got tanku abdul rahman he was the first prime minister of malaysia um he was married they they have um at least at Thank the time i'm not sure about now but they had um is it multiple oh. marriages going on back then it was a little bit like the third one on the list. This one right here? Um, let's see. Uh, the black and white picture in yellow there. Yeah, right there. Tanku Abdul Rahman. Okay. Let me get his profile up for you. So he married um, a, a woman. He, he went to England for school. He, he um, met a woman there. And they married. Uh, they were married for a few years. Um, and then they divorced. Um, but that's how we made his connection. He is the son of a king, the brother of a king. Um, and we were able to trace his family back many generations because that's all documented. But we didn't have a connection. This the royal family, you know, married in, internally with other Malaysians and um as many people as we had connected, we we didn't have um, a connection to the big tree until we found this marriage that he had married this woman in college who was from England and we were able to trace her family. So not only did we connect him, but we connected the entire Royal family of Malaysia to the tree. Yeah. So, that's great. Um, you know, it's, um, it, it's fascinating to me. She was a, a um, store, a storekeeper in um in london and she married him oh i'm and actually there was a, another little piece we didn't trace it in england after she divorced him she married a man from oklahoma <laughs> and moved to oklahoma so we traced the oklahoma family and made the connection so the royal family of malaysia is connected through this um basically farming family in oklahoma it probably has no idea that they're related to the <laughs> kings of Malaysia, but um, but that's how we made that connection. And I just wanted to point out, Thomas, there's some comments in the chat. Um, mm -hmm. Thomas was bringing out that it's a great idea and how uh, it makes the site more cultural, culturally pluralistic. Sorry, <laughs> obviously, obviously, have some time, but I hope this will continue next year. And that that's kind of what was mentioned before is that we were hoping it would be able to continue into next year. So, so let me address that. I wasn't planning on making an announcement here, and I oh, maybe okay. shouldn't quite yet because yeah. it's still in the works. But for next year, um, I don't know that I have the energy to do a three week project every week for an, an entire second year. I still have half a year to go now. Um, but what we're working on is rather than doing a um, a um, country at a time as we're doing now, um, is creating a brand new project that's going to be um, a global project that will incorporate all the countries of the world that are not already covered by a major project. Oh, that's a good so way if to you go have, about it. Yeah, if you have a, um, you know, a more obscure country, you'll have a place. Well, let's say somebody from... Um, you know, Liberia or Lebanon wants to join up and they come onto the wiki tree and they see nothing representing their country, they'll probably disappear pretty quickly. But if they have a page that they can go to show at least, you know, we've got something up there, we'll have some notables there, we'll have yeah. some information on, um, you know, perhaps started. naming patterns, languages, those things. Um, you know, because I imagine it's it's probably a fact that in the United States, at least, we have people from every country in the world. So, um, yeah, I'm sure there isn't probably, I imagine there isn't a country in the world that doesn't have descendants that might want to do their genealogy at some point. Now, not yeah. all countries find genealogy as, um, significant or interesting as we do in the West. 
Um, so that's something we're running into with some of the countries is they don't they don't keep the records, they don't have a genealogical society, that kind of thing. Um, right. But there's no reason that WikiTree can't become the place that those people go for their, um, you know, to, to do their projects. And the more we get all these people up, it's the famous people, the notables that people are going to be drawn to first. And if they see that they've got a presence, um, you know, that, um, you know, hopefully it'll be a benefit to people. And then people that just, like me, I, I'm finding this to be sort of like doing crossword puzzles. Um, <laughs> I, I finish one and, you know, it doesn't really have anything to do with my family history, or but it, but I go on and I, um, it's kind of like know, find a couple answers and yeah. yeah, put it away and come back tomorrow and do a few more. And then when I'm done, as we are with Malaysia, I move on to the next one. And that's a good segue. Some are easy and some are hard and, <laughs> You know, some go real quickly and others I, I, I have to really scratch my head over. Um, but it's that same kind of um, of um, experience that, you know, if you're into crossword puzzles or Sudoku's or whatever, um, each one is a little bit different and um, different difficulty levels. And, uh, and but then once you figure out the kind of the pattern, the, the next one becomes easier and so on. So are you ready to announce the next country? I suppose I could do that. Okay. Um, so I'm curious. I'm doubting you, but I'll give my clue my clue again. Hold on <laughs> just a minute. If if you noticed in my um, messages announcing the, the Zoom meeting today, I made a couple awkward statements about um, uh, the next one being an easier country unless I'm perhaps in denial. Um, did anybody pick on the pick up on the clue there? <laughs> <laughs> and I'll spell out the word for you if I have to give you. The clue was in the word denial. Anybody? I can't see the chat room. Nobody. Nobody sure. got to get it. Thomas got it. Thomas, Thomas got it. Thomas got Thomas it. Got it. Thomas got what it. did Thomas say? I can't see the chat room here. Let me. What did he say? Yep, he said Egypt. Oh, Egypt. Yep, Thomas got it. Okay. Yeah, I like having Thomas on the team. <laughs> We're going to Egypt. Like once you pointed out, it was um, obvious. <laughs> the what? I said once you pointed it out, it was obvious. <laughs> yeah, it's obvious if you know to look for it. But I thought people Thomas might think it was it was kind of an awkward um, phrase that I used in there, and I thought people are going to think I'm weird, but. Um, so, um, so if we can pull up the Egypt page, I'm just going to show the little video to... just real quick to show where we've been yes, and where we're yes. going. Yes, you want to do that now? Sure. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Do you want to explain a little bit of what that torch means? Yeah, so uh, follow the, the torch on the space pages of the current country. Have you moved the torch over yet? I haven't added it to Egypt yet, but I'll do that So today. on Malaysia, if you look at Malaysia, um, it's got the Wikigames torch. And so what that is, is it's kind of like the Olymp... Uh, summer games or whatever you follow the torch through the countries so that's what we've got going on um we're moving that wiki games torch through the different countries on the uh, 15 nations global tour so the current country will have that torch on it and that's just what what it's signifying there so if you've seen that wiki games um tra trailer that we did that's what that's what that's all about and on the week that um, the Wiki Games begin, we will be announcing what um, country the Wiki Games are going to be held in, and um, that'll be our nation of the of the week. So you can stay tuned for that. Um, okay, so if we want to scroll down to our notables, um, so okay. I've said uh, um, at the beginning of this. Um, session and every other um, uh, wrap-up I've had that I always begin nervous and 
Um, this time, I'm not so nervous, partially <laughs> because I've seen what our people can do um, and how I, as nervous as I've been um, in the past, it turned out to be unnecessary. Um, but also Egypt, as I've gone through, I don't do a lot of research on these people, um, you know, as I, as I um, select them. Um, they need to be notable. They need to have a wiki tree page. Um, and I'm sorry, a Wikipedia page. Um, preferably they don't have a wiki tree page, or if they do, it's very sparse. Um, sometimes they'll have maybe a parent or a spouse listed, but otherwise, um, you know, we're not starting with profiles that are well-developed. And, um, again, most of these people I've, many of these people I've never heard of prior to this project. Um, but in the little bit of reading that I've done on Wikitree and, uh, I'm sorry, again, Wikipedia and uh, a little bit of other biologic, bi biographical information I found, I don't think these are going to be as hard to connect as maybe some of the others. I could be wrong, but that's my gut telling me that this one is not going to be as difficult as uh, some of the, the past. Uh, they do have um, names that we may not be as familiar with in the West, but they don't seem to be complicated names, um, two or three names per person. So easier to figure out. They pass on family names. Uh, so that should all be um, much easier to go through. Um, they also, um, you know, Egypt, it is in the Middle East, it is in Africa, but it's also not far from Europe. So there's a lot of interaction with Europeans uh, going on. And so that also, um, you know, could work to our advantage. Um, you'll see on this one also, I only have, oh, and I got to get that picture fixed, but the last one on the list is the current president of Egypt. He is the only living person that we're going to be dealing with this time. Everybody else is deceased, so that'll um, work to our advantage. Um, if you want to scroll back to the top, I'll go down the list and kind of introduce everybody to okay. the notables here. Um, we're starting out with, um, and I always mess up the names, but Huda Shah Arawi, I believe is how she pronounces her name. She was a feminist leader back in the early 1900s. Um, it's amazing to me when I go through and I, I Google famous people from Egypt, how often I get um, women that were very active in the 1800s, early 1900s in women's rights in the various um, countries. You hear a lot about it in the United States and um, other Western European countries, um, but a lot of these um, Middle Eastern countries, African countries, South American countries also had uh, women that were very active in um, working towards towards women's rights in their countries, getting the right to vote, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, so she's an early uh, feminist leader. Um, Taha Hussein is the second one. He was a, um, a writer. He is considered um, somewhat the premier um, writer of, of Egyptian literature. He was actually blinded when he was, I think, six years old. Um, so that's, uh, there's an interesting story there. But um, again, he is considered kind of the premier writer in, in Egyptian literature. Similarly, Sayyid Darvish, father of modern Arab music. Um, we're talking uh, death in 1923. So modern being a subjective term, I suppose, but a um, but, uh, very, very prominent name in Egyptian music. Um, Hassan, pretty, pretty young too. What, thirty-one years old when he died? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, he was not old. Which, um, which I found, we've had a few people that died young, and that does um, limit the records that are out there. But he's famous enough that I'm, you know, I'm hoping we can still get get some connections there. Um, one of the things we've talked about before is obituaries in foreign countries. Um, don't say the same things that they do in the United States. And I don't know about other European countries, but in the United States, we talk a lot about family. We talk about where people grew up. Um, in the other countries, they tend to focus strictly on what they were famous for. Mm -hmm. And you'll often see an obituary that doesn't mention anything about spouse, children, parents, brothers, right. sisters, et cetera. So um, they're not always as helpful as they are 
in the United States. If you can even find a newspaper from that country that, you know, is online. Um, so Hassan Fateh, this is an interesting story. He's an architect. Um, they had a town outside of Gaza in Egypt. And the people that settled there built their houses on top of ancient tombs. And then they would dig holes in the bottoms of their floors from their house into the tombs and steal all the treasures out of the tombs. And that's how the people of this town made their living, was selling artifacts. Wow. Well, the government didn't like that. So they hired Hassan Fathé to create a new town a couple miles away and relocated all the people. So that's what he's most famous for, is creating this new town to stop all the people from building on top of the ancient tombs. Um, he also, though, as part of it, um, he decided to stop building in the Western style and to start building in the, um, basically the ancient Egyptian style. And the reason for that was the things like steel and concrete. Number one, lugging all that out to the desert was not easy. But right. two, it wasn't conducive to the to the climate and the temperature out there. So by going back to using Adobe, um, he was able to create homes that would stay cool all year long or warm in the in the winter time. Um, so there was a lot of innovation that he used, um, and all these people got free houses, but they weren't happy because they lost their livelihood of being able to steal treasure. So anyway, right. it's an interesting story. Um, Muhammad Nagabi, no, Nagwib, Nagwib, I'm, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. He was the first president of Egypt, so it was an easy one to choose there. Um, I always try to get some sports figures in there, so Fared Simiaka, Simiaka, um, an Olympic diver. Um, he also starred in some movies after he retired from diving, so he's got a, somewhat of a celebrity status there. Um, Doriah Shafik is a feminist poet and an editor. So also um, a lot of the feminist leaders that I've found um, are also writers. And I think that's how they get their um, their message out is by editing feminist publications and that. So um, that's what she was known for. Um, this couple of names, people that know anything about Egyptian history will probably be familiar with. Um, Gamal Abdel Nasser, second president of Egypt and followed by Anwar al-Sadat, third president of Egypt, uh, both very famous in world history. Um, Boutros Boutros Ghali was the head of the United Nations. Um, not too long ago, he passed away a few years ago, but I, it's probably in the 90s that he was there. Um, Yosef Shahine, it's pronounced with an SH, I found out. Yosef Shahine, filmmaker, directed several um, important Egyptian movies. And he's actually won worldwide recognition, some awards and stuff. So not just in Egypt, but films that um, have been presented throughout the world. Um, Hind Rostrum is an actress. Um, now, an interesting thing with her that somebody can um, take this project on, if you read her Wikipedia, Wikipedia page, it says she was born and then it gives her name. And then it says, or, and it gives a different name. Huh. So it gives you a choice of what her name was when she was born. Hind Rostrum is her stage name. Um, but I have no idea what her birth name is because, again, it, it gives you two, two to choose from for some reason without an explanation. So we got to figure out um, who she actually was. Um, Ahmed Zawel, he was a Nobel Prize winning chemist. Um, again, I like to find these the, these Nobel Prize winners that come from all over the world. We often don't hear about them, but uh, when you only have one Nobel Prize winner from your country, they become quite a a, 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 um, a hero locally. And then um, Ahmed Zaki was a very famous uh, kind of sex symbol movie star in in Egypt. And the final one is our the current Prime Minister of Egypt. I'm sorry, the current President of Egypt, um, Abdel. Fatah El Sisi. Um, we have yet to connect any of our world living world leaders to the big tree. And again, something I've talked about in the past is it's intriguing to me how private 
world leaders in other countries are able to keep their family business. Um, a lot of times it's difficult to find out how many children they have, um, you know, anything about their wives, the names of their parents. They just don't publish that stuff in other countries. It's um, a lot, probably a lot to do with security. Security, but also I think um, there, there's a kind of a bit of mythology that they like, you know, that, that supports their power. And the more you know about them personally, you know, the stuff we tend to know about our presidents and their families um, isn't always something that they're the most proud of. Um, right. We get a lot of embarrassing stories about brothers and uncles and, um, you know, um, you know, you've got Hunter Biden or you've got the, the Trump children that always seem to be stirring something up. Um, I think a lot of these leaders say the less you know about my kids, the better. <laughs> um, and, it, and it keeps their mythology kind of in place. Um, if you know that they grew up just like you and they're just normal people, that doesn't um, have the same impact well, well for their power. So that's 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 my philosophy. I don't I don't know that for a fact, but I, I have a f and and the example that I've used that's kind of the obvious one is, you know, as famous as Vladimir Putin is, we know nothing about his family right. and background. It's all it's all the mythology that he wants to create um, is what gets out there. They also a lot of these countries the leaders control the media, right. so unless they approve the stories, they don't get you know the, oh. the bad gossip doesn't get out there, but. Um, yeah, but so the the world leaders have actually been some of our biggest challenges in in finding information. Um, but so but there we have. They're, um, they're on there, and you have profiles added to them. So someday they'll get connected. <laughs> yeah, somebody will come <laughs> along and get them connected. Yeah, they can try to keep the the myth alive, but WikiTree will fix it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um. You know, we're only we're only able to publish what's out there publicly somewhere else anyway. Um, yeah. You know, so if it's if it's you know, only only so much damage we can do. But um, <laughs> uh, let's see here. So um, somebody had commented again. I've got my comments turned off again here. We them back on. Um, you know, I do try to. I do try to keep a variety of um, of um, people. Yeah, right there. Um, uh, most of the countries um, have a lot of famous political leaders, um, but I try not to overload the tree with just politics. Um, I like to get a variety. I, and so, or, or likewise, if I see five or six actresses or actors, I narrow it down to one or two that, maybe are um you know maybe they're separated by time frames or something but um mm -hmm. i do um try to keep it as as um as much variety as possible because so, some people enjoy some topics better than others so right. if you're not interested right. in politics maybe you have a movie star you could do or a sports hero you can do an astronaut um a scientist so i do try to um you know, spread that out now in countries like Malaysia, um, just finding 15 famous people was, was a challenge. Um, it, because a lot of these countries that were not, um, westernized, I'll say early on, um, up until the last couple decades, you didn't have movie stars. You didn't have sports heroes. You didn't have the, the, the pop stars like we have now. In the United States, you could go back to the 1800s and find celebrities um if you're in kenya they didn't have movie stars in the 1800s um you know so so it makes finding that variety of celebrities you know a bit of a challenge um they might have local heroes but they weren't names that you would um necessarily find on wikipedia or would, would rise to our level of notability so um and then just because somebody's notable i do I, I do want to find people that I at least think we have a chance of connecting. Um, you'll read some bios on Wikitree that are only two or three sentences long, and they give you no clues at all who this person was outside of what they accomplished. So, um, you know, I don't, I, I try to avoid those if there's not a, at least something in the bio that gives me a clue as to where we could start looking. 
Um, but that that can narrow in some of these countries. That can narrow it down to very few people. Um, you know that um, make good candidates. But um, right. But you know, and then sometimes the more obscure people are easier wind up being easier to connect. Like I said, the world leaders you'd think would be the easiest, but they're not. So. Yeah, you never know who's going to have that connection. Yeah, we don't know until we get there. And and we've had a couple in past countries where, um, you know, the father or the grandfather was already on WikiTree. So um, I think it was, um, I think it was in Kenya, if I remember right. On day one, we had two connections because the family was already there. It's just nobody had made it noted noted that this person, this notable, (laughs) was part of that tree. So. you know, and notables tend to marry into families with other notables. And that makes it, that's helpful because we can then go back to WikiTree for that other person's um, profile, go back to Wikipedia, I mean, and, um, you know, sometimes get other, you know, get their parents' names and their siblings' names. And so that helps. They also tend to marry into notable families in the same field that they are. So if you've got an actor, and I, I suppose we do that in the United States as well. If you've got you've got actors who marry other actresses whose father yeah. was an actor who's, you know, and right. there's this one, they divorce and they marry a different actor. And, you know, so you've got these um, family trees that are full of, of notable people. Uh, politics, the same thing. Now, something that we glossed over with um, with Malaysia because I got knocked off the, the screen, um, Malaysia has 13 what you would call states. Nine of them have their own king. Oh, and right. I remember. Yeah. They, yeah. They elect a new king every five years from amongst those nine. So the king of Malaysia is one of the nine kings of the Malaysian states. He does right. a five year term and then they elect a new king. So the king of Malaysia is really more like the president. But you have five, nine royal families in Malaysia. Took us a while to figure that out and how that worked. But now we're working on, and I think we'll continue, even though we're moving to Egypt, um, getting those royal families all online. Because that information is out there. Whether we That's can right. get them connected or not, um, there was some intermarriage between them. And we did get a couple connected to the big tree. Um, but if we can get those families, royal families connected to each other, um, then we could have all nine of those families connected. So that would be a cool thing to do. That would be great. But we run into, um, you know, a little bit of a challenge with this information seems to be public knowledge, but we have one family that we were able to trace back to the year 1032. Wow. But we have no documentation. Right. We just have WikiTree and similar sites that list all the kings. Um, but that doesn't really quite meet the standards for pre-1700, pre-1500, you right. know, files. So, so trying to figure out what documentation, what's considered common knowledge and can be accepted just as that and what needs to, you know, get some document. I'm sure it's documented somewhere, um, right. but we haven't located it all. But so that's, that's really just, again, one of the many, well, that's many exciting. challenges. That, well, and what we've done is we've we've gone as far back with each of those lines as we can and then create, um, for one of them at least, we created a free space page that takes you all the way back to 1,000, but we're not putting the profiles on. Um, but you have a place you know, where everybody on, can work on the yet. research and talk yeah, about so it and we collaborate can all about what it. We've learned. And then great. if we can actually confirm it, then we can move it on to an actual profile. But that way the, pro- the information's up there. If somebody comes along you know, several months down the road and, and sees it, they can choose to work on it and not have to start from scratch. Wonderful. All right. Well, thank you so much for a great job. All right. Well, I enjoyed it. Um, For those, um, for those that want to work on Egypt um, right now, the links are not up. So if you go to any other country um, page, you can just change in the address bar, you know, Malaysia to Egypt and it'll take you there. I'll have the um, links up by tomorrow. Um, if anybody notices that I didn't open any a privacy level, sometimes I forget to do that, and I'm I'm not aware. But um, you know, definitely let me know if there's anything that's still locked or you can't access to, and um, we'll we'll see what we can do. I think this one again is going to be. I think this is going to be um, 
there are they've all been fun ones, but I think this will be particularly fun in its um, uh, maybe not quite as stressful as some of the previous ones. So <laughs> we'll see. I'm really excited to see what happens in three after the three weeks are up. <laughs> yeah, and we will be back here in three weeks to let everybody know. All right. Well, thanks, okay. Well, thank you, David, everybody, for coming. Everybody, everybody for joining us. All righty. Everybody have a good couple weeks.